Okay, now comes uh, the assignment of the boundary condition. So it's very important step in order to get the correct results, of course. So go in the boundary, click on define the supports, and here we have to choose the right group name to assign a whole boundary. Uh, choose the select single and we'll select actually the node 21 so using select single you can select only one node check the de all and click on apply now we'll select three different nodes the node 1, the node 47 and 67 and this time we will uh, fix dy and dz only. Click on apply. Now we will select uh, the node 2, 48 and 68 and we'll fix only dz this time. And finally, the node 22 will be uh, the node 22 will be uh, fixed. So D X and D Z, and click on apply. Now we'll enter the effective whites. So uh, it is the scale factor which will be applied uh, for the moment of inertia of the girder section. So, um, it and actually it will be used for calculating the member stress. So, if you want to keep the boundary on to see what is going, you have to click on display boundary and check the support. Click on OK. Now, activate the node number and element numbers. Uh, you can inactivate the nodes. Okay. Now go again in the boundary tab, and this time you have to go in uh, effective whites. Where is it? Effective whites. Now again, uh, don't forget to select the boundary group name. So first for the E uh, whites one. So for the selection, we can directly use here uh, this. So 1, 2, 16, enter. So it selected automatically the elements. And enter the coefficient here, the scale factor, 0 0.985, and click on apply. Now we'll uh, select the next boundary group. E whites 2 will select the following node 12 to 26. This time the scale factor will be 0 0.965 and click on apply. Finally, um, the last uh, scale factor so is E whites 3. Selection uh, will be. Oh, okay, I forgot. Uh, check again EYH2 and we'll uh, assign to another so 27 to 40. This, uh, these elements at the middle. And the coefficient is 0 0.992. Click on apply. And uh, this time we'll go to EY3. Select 41 to 50. Enter. The factor is 0 0.965. Click on apply. And the last one, 51 to 
66 enter and 0 0.985 and click on apply now we'll define uh, the loads so here you have in this table the input loading data for the right girder the left girder uh, for the pre-composite load and the post-composite load so let's go first in the loads tab and in the static loads click on static load cases enter the name DL BC1 for the load type choose construction stage load click on add and we'll use create a servol like that BC3 BC4 and finally AC and click on close now let's assign the dead loads for the pre-composite section click on element you can go in the eyes of view and unselect the known number oh, first uh, before assigning the element we'll assign the self weight so a uh, self weight will be applied during the first uh, case DLBC1 uh, so just enter minus 1 in Z uh, coordinate click on add click on close now you can open element again now to select the section you can go in element here select directly uh, some section 1 for example click on add and it's okay now it seems that I forgot to assign the crossbeam to the crossbeam section group so in order to change that uh, go in the view and selection option select the intersection line and select like that to choose only the crossbeam so first unselect everything select only the crossbeam and assign the crossbeam to uh, your model ok now again uh, come back in the load window element uh, select the load case and the load group DLBC1 here in the element choose section section 1 so here uh, the section 1 only is selected then uh, here sorry choose DLBC2 not 1 and use uniform load uh, global direction Z so value will be relative and 0 1 for X2 and here you can enter the value of the load so 30 minus 38.96 and click on apply now we'll apply the uniform moment and torsion to uh, the first part of the composite section on the left girder so you can select it using the polygon uh, tool so which is here directly like that then in the load type select uniform moment and torsion this time it will be in global x direction and the value is of m is 1.49 click on apply now repeat the same pro procedure for the right girder so select 
the element of the right girder first then you only have to change the sign here so it will be minus and click on apply let's activate again the boundary condition and the loads now we'll do the same for the DLBC3 and DLBC4 so just change that to DLBC3 first then choose the left girder uh, from here uh, first we'll assign the self weights so it will be uniform so select the section 2 and assign the value of the self weight and click on apply now we will um, assign the same moment so uniform moment torsion don't forget to change to global x direction use the polygon tool to select the left girder only and enter the value which is minus sorry no minus 1.5949 now do the same for the right girder enter a minus sign and click on apply now change the load name load case and the group name with the section tool select the section 3 click on add Uh, in the load type select uniform load global z direction minus 38.96 click on apply select uniform moment and torsion global x use the polygon tool for the selection Click on apply and finally select the last uh, girder here don't forget the minus sign okay so now all the loads and the boundary condition are applied now we have to assign dead loads for the post composite section so again in the element tab we'll still are here select um, first select section press the shift key and select the three section here and click on add now in the load case name select DLAC same for the load group choose uniform load in global z direction and for the value it will be minus 18.69 and click on apply now we'll apply same the uniform moment and torsion for uh, global x will use the polygon to select only the left girder and for the value it will be minus 19.69 click on apply 
and we'll do the same for the right girder. This time the value will be plus 1969. Click and apply. Uh, 